This is an example for atomic symbols, nuclide symbols, ion symbols. Um, you might see charts like this in your textbook and some of the example questions. You might see something like this on an exam where you would have to fill in some of the missing information based on the information that you're given in any particular column or row. And so if we look at the top row, and the top row here should be containing symbols of our atoms or nuclides, then we're given some information from these symbols. And we can look at these symbols, for instance, we can look at sodium 23, and we can see that because it's sodium, the atomic number of sodium is 11. Because the atomic number is 11, that means their number of protons in this atom is 11. If the number of protons is 11 and the charge is zero, the charge equals the protons minus the electrons. So if the charge is zero, then that means that the protons equal the electrons. So we also have 11 electrons to go with those 11 protons. The neutrons is a little trickier, but the symbol tells us there are 23 total nucleons, protons and neutrons in the nucleus, 23 equals protons plus neutrons, so 23 equals 11 plus the number of neutrons. The number of neutrons must then be 12. We can look at the next one over, and again it's another symbol. We're given the symbol here for an ion of chlorine 37. This ion of chlorine 37 has a charge of one minus. Because it's chlorine 37, we know the mass number. That's the number that's shown. The number that's not shown is the atomic number. The atomic number of chlorine is 17. And so the number of protons is 17. The number of protons is 17 and the mass number is 37. Then how many neutrons are there? There are 20 neutrons because 37 equals 17 plus the number of neutrons. And the number of electrons is also maybe a little tricky. So the charge equals the number of protons minus the electrons. Because the charge here is 1 minus or negative 1 if you're thinking about the numbers in math, that 1 minus means that there is an extra electron. So we have 17 protons minus 18 electrons in order to have that be equal to 1 minus or negative 1. And we already have the charge here. We don't have to write the 1 when it's just a single minus or a single plus. Notice also that it's the number of electrons that change when ions form, not the number of protons, not the number of neutrons. If you change the number of protons in order to form an ion, then you would also be changing the element. In the third column, we're not given a symbol at all. We're given the number of protons. The number of protons is 13. That means the atomic number is 13. The element with an atomic number of 13 is aluminum. We're told that this aluminum ion or atom or ion has 14 neutrons as well. So 13 protons, protons plus neutrons equals mass. So 13 protons plus 14 neutrons equals 27. So that's the mass number. We're given the charge, 3 plus, that charge goes in the upper right corner. And because the charge is 3 plus, and the charge equals the protons minus the electrons, this means that we have 3 extra protons. This does not mean that we gained 3 more protons. This means that we actually lost 3 electrons. The only way for this equation here to be equal to 3 plus is if the number of electrons is 10. Looking in the next column, we have our number of neutrons, and we're also given a number of electrons, and we're given the charge. If the charge is 0, then what's true about the numbers of protons and electrons? They are equal, and so there are also 8 protons so that 8 
protons minus eight electrons equals a charge of zero. If there are eight protons, then the atomic number is eight. The element with an atomic number of eight, the element with eight protons is oxygen. This oxygen, then the last question is, what's the mass number? It has eight protons and 10 neutrons. So eight plus 10 is 18. The mass number of this oxygen is 18 and it has no charge. The final column, we are given 79 protons off the bat. So that's an atomic number of 79. The element with 79 protons is gold. We're also given the mass number, so we can fill in the mass number. And we're also told the number of electrons. Now, if there's 76 electrons and 79 protons, what do we have more of? We have more protons. So we have more positive charge. How much more positive charge do we have? We have three plus. We could also confirm this by doing 79 minus 76 equals positive three, which as a charge, again, the sign comes after the value for charges. So then the last question or the last blank to fill in in this table is the number of neutrons. So we have the mass number 197 equals the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. The number of neutrons here, you could f find that by doing 197 minus 79. And the number of neutrons is 118. What are the other names for some of these other nuclides here? So we did sodium, we did chlorine. We also have aluminum 27. We also have oxygen 18 and gold 179, sorry, 197. And just to reinforce, we also have chlorine 37 and sodium 23. Now you might be noticing that for some of these in particular, the oxygen and the chlorine, the mass number that we have written down here is not equal to the average atomic mass that's written in the periodic table. It's important to realize that the average atomic mass, again, is an average of all of the stable isotopes of that element, whereas these atomic symbols or nuclide symbols are representing one single atom. Any one atom of a particular element may have a, ma may have a mass very different from the average. And to be complete, of course, this gold ion should have a charge of 3+. Plus included in the symbol.